Those of you who used typewriters before personal computers came along kind of felt that when you switched over to a computer keyboard, it just was different. It wasn't the same, was it? It, it didn't have that satisfying clack of the keys hitting the roller. And your fingers didn't have the nice sensation of tapping the keys anymore either. But at least the computer keyboard still made a little ticking sound when you hit it and the keys moved. But what about your smartphones, your iPads and Kindles? The keyboard there is nothing but a smooth piece of glass. And the keys, if you can call them keys, give your fingers no tactile response at all. Well, developers knew this, and they knew that, that uh, the consumers wanted something more than just hitting the key to let them know that they'd actually done something, that when they hit that piece of glass, that the computer sensed that they touched it. And so initially what they did was put a little tick sound on it, you know, tick, 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 that you heard. But people got annoyed with that, and a lot of people just turned the sound off altogether. So they had to think of a different way of giving people the feedback that they wanted. And what they came up with is what's called haptic feedback. Now, if you touch your phone or your iPad, it, you have a little small vibration there that lets you know that the computer actually sensed your touch. That vibration is what is known as haptic feedback. If it's not there, you would just have to trust that when you touch that key, that it was active. If you want to check this out further, I mean, just get out your cell phones or whatever and, and your iPads and go to the notification section. You know, it's usually under settings there. iPad or iPod, Apples and Androids are a bit different there. And you can go down and through the, scroll through the notifications and there it'll have it, haptic feedback. And you can turn it down or turn it off altogether. But if you're used to that little vibration that happens when you hit a key, turn it off and try tapping it then. And you'll go, wow, you just don't know whether you've hit the key or not because there is no tactile response. Now, thinking of haptics, connect that with the gospel lesson for today. When to his followers, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That phrase, everyone will know, says that love for which Jesus' followers are to be known is sort of like that haptic feedback. It is something substantial. Love is supposed to be a witness to those not only receiving it, but those around you that you have done something. And that kind of love lets the people know that they are in the presence of a follower of Jesus. A follower of Jesus. That's what these catechumens will declare before us today that in their baptisms they received God's Holy Spirit and that God gave them faith and that they are now after learning and being trained in the faith declaring to the world that they are followers of Jesus so how are we supposed to know if you're truly following Jesus how are your friends supposed to know that you're a follower of Jesus? How do your parents and the other people in this church know that you're a follower of Jesus? What's to be your haptic? Love, right? Love. Because that's what the followers of Jesus do. They love one another. And it's not just any kind of love that we're talking about here. This is a specific kind of love. We're not talking about emotional love here, you know, that sentimental, ooey-gooey, mushy type of love. This is love that meets a need. 
This is love that does something. This is love that is sacrificial, that when you see it, it is substantial. It is visible. It is felt. This is love that seeks to meet the needs of others. Jesus in our text said that he would soon physically not be present with his disciples. Up to this point, Jesus has been talking about a love your neighbor kind of love, the golden rule. This kind of love that he said that he was demonstrating up to this point went outward from the circle of believers to meet the needs of those still outside the church. But in today's gospel lesson, Jesus gives us a command and tells us to love one another. And what he's saying there is that when you show love to one another within the body, within the faith community, that sends a message to those outside that you are a follower of Christ and that Christ is present in that faith community. By your loving one another, serving, supporting one another, that's how Jesus' servant love is passed down through the generations and is on display for the world. That's how the world knows you are a follower of Jesus. And you know in our culture today what kind of scrutiny the Christian community is under. You know how the media loves to play up a failure of a professed Christian while giving the intolerant atheist a pass. Love says a lot about a community. This group that Jesus is gathering would later become known as the church. And the primary identifying mark of this church was to be love. Love that serves and supports one another. It is the primary identifying mark of the church. John said it himself later on when he said, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Jesus said it when he said, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Love is the identifying mark of a follower of Jesus. Love is the mark. Love is the haptic. So, how will that affect your lives here forward? Will you, will people around you see and notice that you are a follower of Jesus? Will they witness that in your interactions with one another in the body of Christ? As you love and support one another, will the world say, that person is a follower of Christ. Unfortunately, we have many tales about uh, church members giving a opposite example, beginning with um, the example of members behaving badly when a visitor happens to sit in their seat or in their pew. Or, um, I had a pastor this week tell me a story about a declining uh, membership adult co uh, Sunday school class, and he asked that group to switch with another adult Sunday school class that was uh, gaining in membership because they needed more room. And the first group said, no, because this was their room. Then you have anecdotes about uh, newcomers who don't feel welcome, that they weren't talked to or, or greeted. Uh, they felt alone even though they were surrounded by people. You have um, narratives of women's groups who put locks on the kitchen cabinets so that other groups don't mess up the kitchen. And that's not to say anything about church fights, about domineering and toxic members, about malicious gossip or 
the labeling of fellow Christians as not real Lutherans because of a difference in worship preference or social action. There's no mark of love there, no love haptic going on. But there is a haptic going on. You who have iPhones or iPads, what happens when you put the wrong four-digit passcode in? It vibrates evilly and shakes and buzzes and the, the screen just back and forth like that which says, wrong, try again. That evil buzz is the haptic that happens where love and compassion and acceptance and humility is not found. Perhaps we need an app or something that starts buzzing when we start behaving badly because this is the church of Jesus Christ after all. But let's not forget the good that the church is already doing. The church seems to be able to put up with or work around or calm domineering members, something that most businesses won't do, which suggests that we've learned at least a little something about love. Let's not forgive that, forget that some children learn, begin to learn about their value for the world because of the praise that they receive from being in a Christmas pageant or, or singing a solo or, or playing an instrument. Or teens who discover that they are a follower of Jesus because of an example of a, a youth leader or a confirmation retreat or a... Um, church camp or a youth gathering. They find acceptance in the youth group when home life is kind of rough. Or church members who um, participate in a mission project or a, a local mission outreach because another member invited them. And that's not to say anything about funeral meals or visiting the sick and the shut-ins by lay members, emergency but quiet financial gifts to members who suddenly experience a need, the delivery of meals to those who are caring for a sick spouse or a child, deep friendships that develop that would have never happened if they hadn't met in a Christian congregation. These and so much more are examples of haptic love. Congregations, even struggling congregations, get many things right. Often, brothers and sisters love one another through support and service. Jesus said it's a new commandment that he gave us, meaning it's not optional for us. But this is a commandment that's different from other commandments. This is a gospel commandment. While other commandments build fences and limits us, this is a freeing commandment. Love one another. Put into practice the essence of God because God is love. So why should I love one and others? Why should I sacrifice for them? Why should I humble myself, give of myself, seek their good before mine? St. John says it bluntly, because God first loved you. St. Paul says, while we were yet sinners, while we were rebellious, while we were working against God, walking the wrong direction, Christ died for you. As followers of Jesus, we emulate him, not to gain anything, but because our hearts are filled with God's love. And we can't help but share that with others. Why, as a follower of Jesus, do I sacrifice for others? Because God sacrificed himself for me. 
and I want to pass that love on to others. Well, we could talk about loving others, and we did for six weeks this past fall in Life on Mission. But today, Jesus commands us to love one another. How will that work in your life? My challenge for you as confirmands is to encourage one another. Be responsible for each other. Make sure that no one drifts away from the faith in Christ and the worship of Him. Be responsible for one another ourselves. Look at those around you. Who needs your encouragement? Who needs your love and support? Christ said, love one another. That is the haptic of a follower of Jesus. Love is the haptic of a follower of Christ. And now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.